Hey there, this is our engineering trust project. We have a tower crane that we have built and constructed. We have our two tensions or cables and tension right here, which in order to keep this standing, we have to have a counterweight over here so that it doesn't just flip over. Right here we have our force member that is in tension. This one is in compression. And this one right here is a zero force member. We have our two pounds of weight, which is getting held up by our SolidWorks member here. And that's about it. As you can see, I was given the task of designing a SolidWorks model for our hangar. Um, this actually is not SolidWorks. This is MakerBot um, program, and it is to 3D print our design. Um, so I imported my SolidWorks file into this MakerBot program, and um, this is what our part looks like. Obviously, you can see it's a very intricately designed project. Um, it is very difficult. It took me all of two minutes to design. Um, so this is what our simple little hanger looks like. This is the actual part right here. Uh, it took about an hour to print. Um, yeah, it's very difficult to make these things. It is uh, very intricately designed. Um, and yeah, that's our 3D hanger. We calculated the forces that would be in this member and this member. And to do that, you can look up here this is a diagram that we drew of this. As you know that you have your force of two pounds pulling down on this end point, and that these two members must be have reacting forces that will create the that will cause the total forces there to be zero. So to do that, we can look at point C and we can analyze it. And we can take the sum of the forces in the y direction, which would be up in this case to be zero. And when we uh, look at that, this diagram here, we know that there's a Y component of FBC, which is this member, and then there's the force acting downward from our mass that is hanging. And we assume that this mass that is acting on this side is halved because we assume that is equally in the middle and that half is acting on this back side and the other half of it is acting on the front side. So then we sum up these forces and we get that the Y component, or that the Y component of BC, and then we can use our knowledge of trigonometry to solve for what FBC would be, which is 1.56 pounds. And then we can sum up the forces in the X direction, which would be this way, and we know that there will be the horizontal component of FBC, which we just solved for, and then a force on this member that is acting only horizontally. So using trigonometry, we can find, we can find the horizontal component of FBC, and we can also just sum up these forces and solve for FAC being 1.195 pounds. And then we also and analyzed this to solve, to figure out uh, some examples of zero force members in this problem. And we found that these members oh, acting along here would be zero force members because if you look at the points, they are the only, at these points, they're the only members that are exhibiting a horizontal force at, the, at this point. So unless you have a load acting in a horizontal direction, they will not have that component of their force making them a zero force member. When we hooked up our load cells to our members that we measured, we are able to notice that we were pretty close on our calculation for the first member being in tension, which is represented by the negative sign in this program. And then if we look at the horizontal member that we analyzed, we see that it is two point, roughly 2.25 pounds, which is about double what we calculated, which we're not 100% sure on why that is. It could be due to the gusset plates uh, transferring forces in ways that we are unsure about or other unknowns. 
And then if we look at this third one, which we attached to what we assume to be a zero force member on the tower section of the crane, we see that it is very low force, which it's not exactly zero, but we can assume that it is acting as zero force, but the gusset plates again could be distributing some force onto there, not making it absolute zero. In conclusion, our calculations were able to give us correct evaluations of whether these two forces, these two members were in tension or compression, though our numbers may not have been 100% correct, which we are not 100% sure on why, but that is what further study is for.